Hi everybody, my name is Katie Patchkey and I'm coming to you from Washington DC and I really wanted to film a video today about my experience um, going to graduate school in Europe. My name is Katie and I spent the last 10 years of my life traveling. Life is amazing. I have traveled to 33 countries and create videos to capture my experiences abroad. Check out my videos and make sure to subscribe to Wanderlust Tales to follow the adventures around the world. Happy travels, friends! It would be great to kind of address everything in one video, so that's what I'm here to do today. So I attended um, Dublin City University from the years 2016 to 2017 and I majored in international relations and it was a one-year master's program and I'm really glad that I decided to go to Dublin City University in Dublin, Ireland. One of the main reasons that I really wanted to go there was because the program was in English and I am a native English speaker so I was just a little bit nervous about going to school that um, maybe I couldn't understand the language. Now I'm not somebody who's usually nervous about language barriers. Um, I have lived in Seoul, South Korea for a year so it wasn't something I I was concerned about in that component but more so just I wanted the to have the educational materials be um, accessible in English so that was just one priority for me if that's not a concern of yours and you do speak another language I would definitely recommend going to another school in another country um, and honestly even if you do um, only speak English or a specific language I think it would be a great opportunity to go um, and I think there's enough resources available in some countries that it is possible to do the whole program in English without any hiccups or anything like that so um, I just am going to start off by answering some really common um, questions, kind of starting off with the um, introduction about how I got into um, like grad school and how I found the grad school. So like what search engines did I use? So that's the first component is how I found my school. So. How I found my school was I used this website called masterportal.com. Now I really recommend using this website. It's an incredible search engine and it actually allows you to put the specific um, requirements that you're looking for. So for example, I wanted a one year master program. I wanted it to be a certain cost and I wanted it to be um, in English. So those were my main requirements that I was looking for. So, um, and I also was specifically looking at studying international relations. So once I plugged in all that information, it then came out with a list of all the schools that were available to me. And um, from there, I kind of started creating my spreadsheet. So I used a spreadsheet to kind of track all the schools that I was interested in, um, what the admissions fees were, and um, also um, which schools I had applied to. So once I started um, putting in those applications, um, I started hearing back and then I was able to track if I had gotten into a school or if I had not. Now, one thing to know is I did not get into uh, some schools that I was a bit surprised about. So for example, my major in undergrad was anthropology and there was one school I actually didn't get into um, that I wanted to get my master's degree in anthropology. And I was pretty shocked because I have a whole major with um, studying anthropology, so I was pretty surprised. So also just keep in mind that it's um, there's a lot more barriers when you are coming from overseas. So there may be certain requirements of courses that maybe you haven't taken. Um, so just keep that in mind. So I definitely recommend applying to maybe more schools than you think. So for example, I think I ended up applying to about six or seven schools and I would definitely recommend that just because it's nice to always have options. Now I know it's a little bit more cost up front, but at the end of the day, it's just add that into your expenses because I think it's really great to be able to choose ultimately what school is a best fit for you. So once I, um, kind of like narrowed down my list of all the schools that I wanted to go to. I then um, started to call the schools to make sure that they were accredited universities. Now this is something that's very, very important. When you're going overseas, a lot of times the schools might not be accredited. If the school's not accredited, that master's degree is not going to count for some jobs that you apply to. So that is huge to know, especially going coming from the US. So I just really wanna recommend to make sure that you make sure your schools are accredited. Now, the way you can do that is you can actually call um, countries, um, landlines abroad by using um, your Gmail account. There's a way that you can use Google um, calls to call abroad. So what I did is I used that um, 
my Gmail, to actually be able to call these admissions departments and talk to them um, and get somebody on the phone, get their name, and they would tell me if the school was accredited or not. And then actually fast forward a little bit, but after my program was complete at Dublin City University, I actually had my advisor write me a letter saying that the school that I went to in Dublin, Ireland is an accredited university because sometimes it's hard to find that information online. So when you're applying, it's kind of nice to just um, apply to jobs. It's kind of just nice to have that letter to be like, yes, I went to school and it is an accredited university. Um, and then just uh, something else to note is that um, with the different uh, school systems, you're also going to have different GPA um, requirements. So you may need to convert your GPA that you got in undergrad, um, if you are going to grad school, or if you're going to undergrad um, from high school, um, what you got in their scale system. And then same with the grades that you get over there when you transfer them back and you um, say your GPA or uh, what you got in certain course, you'll have to transfer those grades. And it's a little bit confusing um, how to do that, honestly. So just look into that as well. Um, now we're going to talk about some of the questions about um, preparing to go abroad. So it, there's a lot to do to prepare, uh, but maybe some things that you specifically want to think about when you're preparing to go to school abroad is just making sure you have the supplies um, that you need. So for example, you can always get notebooks over there, um, but they are different ruled. Some of them have different um, like longer um, pages. So you might just want to get all the supplies over there since you are going to be um, going to school over there. But if there's anything specific that you like and you know may cer maybe certain pens or um, working computer or things like that, just make sure you have all the materials that you need before you go abroad. Um, I always recommend to only pack one suitcase when you're moving abroad, um, maximum two. I, I think less is more when you move abroad and you just don't want to be lugging all that uh, luggage around. It's just, it's difficult to move abroad. So I would just say pack as um, little as you can, but then also be prepared um, and also be, um, acknowledge the weather that you're moving to. So I was moving to Ireland, so I definitely packed a lot of, um, a little bit of warmer clothes and then also a lot of rain material and gear that as well. So another thing that you're going to want to think about um, is where is the school located? So for me, the school was located in Dublin, Ireland. However, I did not realize how far the actual campus was from the main city center. So it definitely took me a solid 30 minutes to get in by bus to the main city center. And that was something I was not aware of. Now that was fine for me because um, I had, a, I made, ended up making a lot of friends on campus and that was okay. But just something to be aware of, like where exactly is this campus that you're going to? Um, so for example, Trinity College is right in the main city center of Dublin, so, whereas Dublin City University was a little bit further out. So it's just something to note. Um, and then also, do you want to move to a city? Do you want to move to a more rural area? So just making sure you uh, think about all of those things when you're applying to schools as well. Another thing I saw a lot of is satellite campuses. So just make sure that when you do decide what school you want to go to, um, that it's like a legitimate campus, um, if that's the vibe that you're going for, um, and that uh, you also might want to think about what kind of housing options they have um, for the schools as well. Um, so for example, mine, um, they it was a lottery system. So not everybody got on campus housing for Dublin City University. So that's just something to note. Um, so it's always good to have a backup option and making sure that it's pretty close to the campus that you are living on. So, so specifically for me, um, since I went to Dublin City University, um, I chose to uh, live in College Park. Now that's the main campus where all of my classes were for my international relations major. And it seems like a lot of the classes were there for a lot of the students. It seems to be the most lively campus. So I would definitely recommend living there if you are going to Dublin City University putting that as number one um, or if that's not an option I would also recommend looking at um, off-campus housing options that are close to campus um, maybe close to College Park as well Another thing I wanted to mention is the bus system is pretty easy to navigate there in uh, Dublin, Ireland. So that's something that you can take advantage of. So if you do not get on campus housing, um, you could look at the bus route to see how to get to campus. Um, and another thing I um, now want to talk about is after you're done um, studying. So once you're done studying, um, thinking about wanting to stay. So I think um, if you are thinking about moving to a country that you want to permanently move to, I think Ireland's actually a really great option because there is a lot of job opportunities for people. Um, I had a lot of friends <clears throat> that were from India and the US that were actually able to land job positions after that they completed their degree. So um, it's uh, manageable to find a job. It's not easy like anywhere, um, but it's manageable. And then the other thing that it's really important to know is that if you're in Ireland 
and you find a job and you are able to stay there, I think it's for like three or five years or something like that, you actually can become eligible to be a citizen. So it's a really great opportunity if you're looking for somewhere to move permanently. I think Ireland's a great option. Now I kind of wanted to talk about my recommendations for if I would recommend for somebody to uh, study abroad in Europe or to um, make that transition instead of staying in the United States or whatever country you're from, would you want to take this opportunity? Now, my first recommendation is absolutely. The reason I decided to go to Dublin um, instead of going to school in the US is because uh, the cost difference is insane. I mean, I think my program only ended up costing around $12,000, so I didn't have to take out a loan. I saved that money for two years. Now, um, if I had decided to go into school into the US, the cost would have been about $60,000 for private school and probably minimum about 30 or 20. Um, now, the other thing to consider is in um, Europe, you are able to actually get a master's degree in one year. So that's another reason that I wanted to go there because yes, the cost of going to school for one year versus two years is significantly different. So if you went to a school in the US for $30,000, that's $60,000. For your master's degree or I could have just gone to Ireland for ten thousand dollars and then it's all said and done so that's obviously like cost wise it's a no-brainer I obviously wanted to go there not to mention I did study international relations so that is something that you can easily do abroad and as long as you find a school that's accredited it's absolutely um, a great place to get your master's degree the other thing is I think it's really good to expand yourself to new cultures and surroundings. So I think that moving to Dublin, Ireland was a great experience because I, had a lot to, I got to meet a lot of people from all over the world. And um, I'm really happy that I actually decided to go to that school because um, it also had an on-campus feel, which is something that I was looking for. Um, it was nice to see students walking around the campus, um, but yet the city was right down the street. So it was a, it was a nice transition of the city, but then also the campus life. Um, and I just, I really enjoyed um, how many friends I made. That was something that was an invaluable experience. Living with five other um, roommates, it was great because I got my own room and bathroom, but we had a shared kitchen in College Park. And so I really enjoyed that. I lived with five other girls, and it, or four other girls, and it was a really great experience. Um, and then we always had friends over, and it was really easy to meet other international students. So I highly, highly recommend going to Dublin City University. And I'm sure that um, all the other schools um, in Europe are a similar experience or um, have similar components. Um, so for example, some of the other schools that I got into were in Sweden, the Netherlands, Germany. Um, and so I think it's good to just kind of see what your options are. And you can find all of those schools on Master Portal. That's where I found all of mine. So if you guys have any other questions, um, please feel free to leave a comment below. I'd be happy to help answer anything else. I just really wanted to make this video to kind of be a resource for all of you that are interested in uh, applying to schools in Europe. I really recommend it. I think it is a great um, opportunity. I was Again, I was able to do it so quickly debt-free, which was amazing because it's just such an affordable option. And um, looking at some of my peers now that I'm back in the US, I'm, I'm really grateful for that experience. I got my master's by the age of 26 and I felt like I had a little bit of a leg up because I didn't have to worry about that and I wasn't in debt from it. So I really recommend it. So please, if you have any questions at all, just leave a comment below. Let me know. If you like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. And